everyone. Thank you for joining us. Today, we'll be talking about variable speed pumps, benefits, uh, also the affinity law and the new DOE regulations. So today we're going to have a lot of information about new changes that are going to be happening in the market. And also you're going to be able to learn about our pumps, the, pump, the variable speed pumps that we have in the market for residential pool and uh, commercial pools also. So we're going to start by showing you, first of all, a picture of every single one of our models. I'm going to go more into detail on these pumps, about horsepower, about pipe size, and what we recommend them for. And also, besides the uh, general information installation, we'll do operation. We'll talk a little bit about our programming in our pumps. So let's start. First of all, a little bit of Hayward. Hayward was founded in 1923. We have two divisions, um, industrial and residential, or commercial pools and residential. We have over more than 2,500 employees, and we have plants pretty much all over the world, as you can see in this picture. We have companies in the US where we do our cleaners, which is up in Rhode Island. We have a factory in Tennessee where we do our heaters, and we have another one in North Carolina. We also have in Europe and in China. So as you can see, in Australia, by the way, as you can see, we have a, uh, we're all over the place with our equipment. Let's talk a little bit about the DOE regulations. This is a new thing that came out. I'm not going to talk uh, a lot about this information. You can find this on the website. This is the new US Department of Energy regulations. What does this mean? Well, what this means is that in starting in 2021, like in July, there's going to be a new law where it's going to be where it's going to be a lot of restriction on creating single speed pumps that use a lot of energy. So in other words, big pumps like three horsepower pumps, single speed, um, for example, they're going to be out of the market since the DOE Department of Energy wants to make everything pretty much variable speed. That is the reason why we're going to focus a lot on variable speed since we're looking, I know it's not going to affect uh, most of our markets, but for example, in the US, every single pool, every single um, pool, the filtration pump has to be variable speed pump. We will still make some models that are three quarters horsepower, maybe one horsepower, but they, they all have to meet certain regulations according to energy usage. So as you can see, Energy Star has certified our pumps, our variable speed pumps, which is the ones that we see on the top right, has certified them as Energy Star efficiency pumps. That's the reason why we see the other models kind of faded out because sooner or later, the variable speed pump is gonna take place of every single one of them. As you can see here, we have our models and that's what we compare them to. For example, like on the left side, you'll see uh, single speed pumps and two speed pumps, while the models that are gonna take place of these are the ones on the right. Instead of a TriStar, we're gonna have a TriStar 950. Instead of a Super 2, we'll have a TriStar 900. And as you can see, the Super Pump, which it's one of those icons of Hayward, well, now you can get it on variable speed also and max flow. What is good about having variable speed pumps instead of a, a single speed pump? Well, there is a law that is called the affinity law, which I'm gonna talk about, that tells us why they save a lot of money. But besides that, we get benefits like this ones. For example, just by bringing the speed down to half of what it was, well, we're gonna get a better filtration. Why? Because the water is gonna be moving slower through a filter so by doing this, 
the filter, especially when we talk about sand, but including cartridge NDE. But the, since the water is moving slower, then the sand can capture more dirt than when you move it too fast. What else do we get? Well, again, by reducing the speed by half, I mean, the noise of the pumps are, com the pumps com are completely quiet. That loud noise of a, of a single speed pump changes a lot just by reducing the speed. Also, if we reduce the speed, we'll save a lot of money. And even if we have to duplicate the time we run the pump, we'll still save a lot of money. I'm talking about 75% at least. Well, by doing this, we have more time for chlorination. We have more time for the, for the water to move in your pool to get filtrated. And also we have more time to produce heat in case that when we have a heater. We gotta remember that if we don't have flow, the heaters will not produce any heat and the chlorinators will not produce any chlorine. We have to have flow. And one more thing, since the water is not moving as fast as before, well now our piece of equipment are gonna last longer. For example, cartridges. The cartridge element of a filter, it will last a lot longer by reducing the speed. So let's talk about the affinity law. What's the affinity law? Well, the affinity law is a law that tells us that if we reduce the speed by half, we're gonna obtain half the flow, which makes sense. But the most important thing, the feet of head, the resistance, will produce, will, we, will go down to one quarter of what it was. That's because the water is not being pushed so hard through 90s or T's or equipment. So if we, if we reduce the head of feed, the pump would only use one eighth of its power, which means automatically 75% savings. And if we go lower than half, we'll obtain more savings even. So the affinity law overview, let's talk about a little bit about the affinity law, how VS pumps differ from single speeds. There are three pump affinity laws, the change in flow proportional to change in speed, change in head is proportional to the square of a change in speed, and change in energy use is proportional to cube of change in speed. And how does that benefit us? Well, here you go, reason number one, First of all, variable speed pumps use a motor that it has a permanent magnet. It's not like an induction motor anymore. So that's a big saving right there. The next, variable speed pumps typically, since they use uh, permanent magnets, I'm gonna talk here about uh, the reasons. Okay, by reducing half the speed, we'll, we'll, we will obtain half the flow. An example, if we move 60 gallons per minute and we do this mathematical, well, this mathematics, well, we can see that if we reduce half the speed, we'll obtain half the gallons per minute. Instead of 66, now it'll be 33. If we reduce the speed by 30%, then we'll obtain, instead of 66, we'll obtain 46.2. But the, this examples are gonna go together width than change in head, the hydraulics resistance. Here we go with this example again. If we reduce the speed by half, by, a, by 50%, if we would have had 60 feet of head, well now we'll only have 15, like I said before, a quarter of what it was. And if we reduce it by 30%, then we'll get 29.4 feet of head, which is 30, which pretty much half of what it was before. Again, because we're not forcing the water through 90s, through T's, through pieces of equipment. Now, the most important thing is that by doing that, we'll obtain up savings. Now here we talk about savings. For example, if we spend 2000 watts of energy, well now by reducing the speed to half, now we're only going to consume 250 watts, okay? If we reduce the speed by 30%, then we're going to be spending 686 watts instead of 2,000. So again, the slower you go, the less energy we consume. 
And that's the beauty of this affinity law. We have a calculator on our website. If you just go to Hayward.com and then you go to variable speed pumps, you'll find the energy savings calculator. On this calculator, we can adjust how much the kilowatt is depending on your country, how many hours we change, uh, we, we run the speed, the, the pump normally, what pump does the client have that is single speed. For example, here, we can see that this customer has a one and a half horsepower pump, runs his pump 12 hours. Like I said, you can adjust these. The kilowatt, which is, I don't think that's possible anymore here in the US, but nine cents. And then how many months of the year he runs the pump? Well, normally in our cases in the Caribbean, we run the pump 24, uh, 12 months out of the year. So never stops. Well, after you get these adjustments, then you choose which pump you want to sell the customer and we'll talk about the difference between these pumps by doing this it'll, the controller will tell you that and you can adjust the speed here but at 1000 revolutions per minute he's consuming or he will consume with this new pump only 63 watts normally he's consuming about a 1500 watts with his single speed 1.5 horsepower pump well now in this case is going to be it's going to be only 63 watts we will move about 20 gallons per minute he moves about 70 but let's look at the money let's look at the savings here we can see that we are saving 95 percent even if we run it 12 hours if we go if we go more hours that 95 percent will probably change to like 90 percent or 88 percent it won't be that much of that much of a difference even if we duplicate the time now let's go with something more accurate this app you can find it on you can download it to a tablet ipad it's available through the app store by apple or google play and when you open up the app you'll get this now this is only for the us but doesn't matter you can just choose florida that's that's because the system knows how much is the kilowatt around this area but you can adjust the kilowatt price over here this is in dollars, US dollars. Size of the pool, what type of pump the, the customer has, how many hours a day he runs it, and how many months out of the year. Well, then the calculator, after you get all that information, it will pop up and it will tell you. Customer consumes about $912 a year for his two horsepower pump. Well, with this new pump, which is a TriStar 900, which is equivalent to two horsepower, even if we run it 11 hours, we will only consume at 1,000 revolutions per minute, $36. This is $876 savings per season, per year. That means that after a couple of years, the pump, what you spend for this pump pretty much pays for itself. So again, you can download this for free and use it in front of your customers. This is probably the best tool for us to sell these pumps in the market. Now, a little bit of plumbing and why we're talking about plumbing because we have different size pumps on variable speed. We want to keep we want to keep in mind this middle column, okay? We have to understand that on one and a half inch pipe, we are only going to obtain about 51 gallons per minute. Okay, that's the recommended speed. At two, hor at two inch, we'll obtain about 84 gallons per minute. Two and a half, about 120, 119 gallons per minute. And in three inch, we can obtain about 184 gallons per minute. So if we have a pump that is three horse and moves about 160 gallons per minute, well, if we have one and a half inch plumbing, we're gonna have an issue because the pump moves way too much water that can fit through this pipe. So that's where the problems come, where like the pump cavitates or it overheats and also spends more money when we talk about electricity. Also, just to let you know, the pump will depend about the size of the plumbing. 
and then the filter will depend on the size of the pump okay if we have a pump that moves about 110 gallons per minute let's talk about cartridge here for example so if my pump moves about 110 gallons well we know that a cartridge filtered cs100 it's a little bit small for that flow the recommended flow on this filter this model one it's 100 gallons per minute so that means i'm going to have to go to the 200 which 120 gallons per minute every single one of the filters has a decal on it and it tells you for what flow is recommended for so again if we have a pump that moves 110 gallons per minute well i'm not going to be able to put a sand filter of 21 inches because the maximum that is designed for flow wise it's 44 gallons per minute we would have to go to a 36 in this case and again for d same thing okay a d filter 36 well uh, it's going to be a little small for that kind of flow we're going to have to go to a 60. So again, the filter will depend on the size of the pump. So now we'll talk about variable speed pumps, our models. We have four models in the market, TriStar 950, which is equivalent to three horsepower. It's actually 2.7 total horsepower. Then we have a TriStar 900, which is equivalent to two horse, 1.85 horsepower total. And then we have two pumps for smaller uh applications 1.65 which is our super pump 700 and also our max flow 700 same motor same driver same control just different body and all of them use the same controller okay so the same control is for every single one of the pumps doesn't matter the model of the pump so if we learn how to program one of these controllers we can control or we can program every single one of our pumps without a problem. So why do I say that uh, our pumps are equivalent to three horse, two horse, and one and a half horse? Because depending on what plumbing we have, that's the kind of pump we recommend. So if we have inch and a half plumbing, I will recommend we go with one of these small ones, which are the ones on the bottom, the max flow, 500 or the super pump 700 if we have two inch plumbing we will recommend you go with the two horsepower pump or actually 1.85 which is a tristar 900 and if you have bigger size plumbing two and a half or three inch then you can go with our tristar 900 which is our bigger pump for the residential pools when we talk about variable speed so again here you can see the models and what for what plumbing they're recommended for now, if you have bigger plumbing, for example, instead of having an inch and a half, you have two inch, well, you can go you can go lower on the pump, but you cannot go bigger on the pump. So highly recommend that. Here are the curves. Again, this you, you can find on, on the, in our catalog. Again, for example, at 50 feet of head, our TriStar 950, which is the biggest one, will move about 150 gallons. So one more time, if our plumbing is too small for that size for that size of gallonage, then we recommend you go with the smaller pump. For example, the super pump VS700 at 50 head will move about 40 gallons per minute. At 40, we'll move about almost 60 gallons per minute. So that's ideal for inch and a half plumbing. Curves, when we talk about variable speed curves, well, here you can see our variable speed curves. At the highest speed, this is for the TriStar 950, which is the biggest one we have. At the highest speed, which is 3,450 revolutions per minute, at 40 feet of head, we can move about 160 gallons per minute. Well, for example, if we drop the speed to half, which in this case, half will be 1725 revolutions per minute the black line well the black line will tell us that remember we were at 40 by dropping the speed by half now we go down to one quarter of heat a feet ahead of what it was so now we're at down at 10 while 10 you can see that this curve moves 80 and 80 it's actually half of 160 so by dropping the speed in half, we drop the gallons per minute 
by half. So that's the reason why Hayward has uh, several variable speed pumps, depending on what application, that's the kind of pump we're going to recommend. If it's too big, it's going to have an issue trying to push the water. If it's too small, then it may not do the job. And again, that's the reason why we have variable speed pumps of different sizes, depending on your application. If we have a single speed pump, one of these models on the left, Pantera Whisper Flow, Stay Right Duraglass, Super 2 by Hayward, or a TriStar, then if you want to upgrade it to a variable speed pump, what we recommend is a TriStar 900. Okay, this pump comes with the base that you can use or not use, so you can align perfectly to each one of these pumps without having to do too much plumbing. A simple coupling, and that will be it. Now, if we have one of these models here, then in order to upgrade, we will recommend one of these two models. And again, they align to each one of these so you don't have to do too much plumbing. So let's talk about a little bit about the motor of these variable speed pumps. These motors are what we call TEFC, totally enclosed fan cooled. That means they have an integrated fan to cool them down. They have a permanent magnet compared to a, an induction motor. Totally enclosed, so it's more resistance against the humidity, salt, and more efficient. So that's the big difference between these motors and a conventional induction motor that has been in the market on all these single speed pumps. Please remember, if you have any questions, there's a section on this uh, um, application that we're using for this webinar. Please write down your um, question and I will answer any questions at the end of this presentation. Let's talk a little bit about TriStar 900 VS. Again, this pump has a 1.85 total horsepower and all of our pumps come with what we call a Viden shaft seal. This mechanical seal is more resistant to salt, to chemistry when we compare it to a conventional carbon um, ceramic mechanical seal. So that's a good thing about all of our pumps that we have a better seal. Features, well, we have unions, we have a, a hydraulic, body that is more efficient, more modern when we compare it to the competition. These unions have, you can you can use a plumbing of two inch inside or you can go with two and a half inch on the outside. Again, TEFC motor and programmable digital control. This control even comes with a programmable timers. So we don't need any external timer and we can do several of them. TriStar 950, all I want to say with the TriStar 950 that this model, we have it available with, with or without the SBRS. The SBRS is an option for safety. That means that if the pump detects any kind of blockage on the suction, it will stop. That's in case of, uh, that's for safety. We also, here you can see the model numbers. We have it with the SVRS or without it, and also on commercial. Difference between both of them, not much, pretty much just the model. So let's concentrate with the residential ones. When we compare our pump, which the TriStar 950, which, I, which we say is 2.7 horsepower, we compare this with Pantera's IntelliFlow. But you can see several differences. First of all, their total horsepower is 3.95, and they consume maximum of 16 amps, where ours is 2.7, with a maximum consumption of 10.9 amps. Also, ours comes with wide on shaft seal, which is a good thing. They don't, and has unions. And in the U.S., we have it available for four-year warranty, but that's depending on commercial. So I will double check that with distribution. So 
even though our pump is a little bit smaller in horsepower, well, actually it's a lot smaller than horsepower 2.7 and consumes less amps, while with the curves, we can tell you that we move the same amount of water they do with less energy consumption because our pump has a hydraulically more efficient pump body. So it moves more water with that, with, with that, with, with less electricity. Now, if we, if you want to compare it, you can find this curves on our catalog at 40 feet of head at maximum speed. Again, we move 160 gallons. Well, let, let's look at third curves, third curves that you can find on their catalogs in Teleflow at the maximum speed at 40 feet of head, they move 160 gallons. So we move the same amount of water with less energy. Let's talk a, let's talk a, a little bit about super pump and max flow. We have different models, depending if it's 230 volts or 115, but I like to talk about the differences between both of them. Well, the big difference between both of them, motor-wise, is not because they use the same motor, same driver, same display, or same controller, but the max flow comes with unions, inch and a half on the inside, two inch on the outside. It has a bigger basket, and the body is more efficient since it's newer style hydraulically speaking more efficient both of them they use the same also the same seal uh viden seal so the same stronger seal we have there and the motors are also tefc installation all of our pumps can be installed by, the, by themselves they don't need any kind of automation they don't need any kind of timer everything's controlled by the display or by the controller that is on top of it they can be connected to a Hayward automation control like OmniLogic or OmniHub, or you can also connect them to a third-party control, either Pente or Jandy or anybody else by using relays or through relays. Our, our display, you can change the position of it for a better access, and also you can take it off and mount it on the wall so your customer can have easier access to it. If you want to change the position of it, you just got to remove two screws, turn it around, and then screw it back in. If you don't want to mount it on the, on the wall, you remove both screws, you unplug the, core, the cable, and then you run a new cable, which you get locally, depending on, on the distance would be how much you're going to want to buy. But it's pretty much like a Cat six, Cat five uh, wire internet cable. All we, we all we require is four little strings on it, and then you will need this kit because the kit will have this cover to protect the pump from getting humidity or water inside of the motor or driver. And also, you're going to have the wall mount plate for the controller so it can be mounted on the wall up to 150 feet. Sorry, let me back up a little bit. You can mount this up to 500 feet or 150 meters from the pump. So that way your customer can have an easy access to the pump without having to go um, around the house or into a pump room. Now, this is how you're gonna see them inside. There's two models. They're a little bit different, but they have the same thing. First of all, dip switches, that's for a unique address, that's in case of automation. And then we have the interface connection, which is an RS-485, that's where the controller gets plugged in. Or if you wanna connect this to um, Hayward Automation, you will use that little bar also. If you wanna plug it in or connect this to a third-party control, then we'll use this little green bar and connect it to relays, which you're gonna see how to do it right now. Then on the right side, we'll have our connection for 215 volts or 230, depending on the model. Very important to put a ground wire to it and also bonding. Don't forget the bonding in all of our pumps. We recommend bonding every single one of our pieces of equipment. Anything that is metal, has electricity, and has contact with water needs, needs to be grounded and bonded. Here you see the same installation, a little bit of colors. And this is the new driver. Like I said, we have two different drivers, but it's pretty much the same. On the right side, you bring the um, 240 volts, 115, depending on the model. 
you will need to remove these two black wires and use the screws for a solid and better connection for the 240 volts or 115 volts. On the left side, you will have this green bar, again, for relay control, and then our communication bar, either for the remote control that goes with the pump or to go to Hayward Automation. And again, very important, ground and bonding, please. If we want to connect this to automation, this cable comes with the pump. All we got to do is just run three little wires, just follow the colors. A will go to number two Omni Omni, which is the, our, our system of, of automation. B will go to number three, and then a communication wire will go to number four. You'll find this on the installation manual, so you don't have any problem. Also, we will let you have this information so you can have it available whenever you have a connection like this. If you want to go to relay control, you just have to follow this bar. You would have to use four relays. On the first one, we'll feed it with 240 volts. 240 volts go to your pump. That means that when that controller turns on, the pump gets energized and it starts. And then we'll use this connection for three more relays so we can control more speeds not only one without having to use the controller on the pump uh, once again very important use bonding please also we recommend always on the suction side of the pump to have straight pipe before any 90 or a T and this straight pipe has to be at least five times the diameter of the pipe so we have two inch pipe we recommend you have at least 10 inches of straight pipe before any 90 or T or three-way valve because if we have if we don't have that then the pump is going to cavitate and we're going to have an issue with the pump not having a full prime and also using more amperage and overheating and last let's talk about a little bit of programming Programming, our control, it's very simple. First of all, on the left side, we will have four buttons, which are the buttons for our speeds. Speed one, speed two, speed three, and speed four. These buttons are pretty much a quick access to change the speed. So in other words, we can program timers internally, but if you wanna change the speed for a reason, maybe you wanna vacuum your pool or just move the water faster for another reason, like for example, a waterfall. Well, instead of going inside of the programming and having to change times and speeds and names, you can use these buttons to get a quick access. These buttons come uh, set for a certain speed, but you will I will tell you how to change that in a little bit. You can change the speed on these buttons. You can adjust it to whatever you want, and also you can put a name on it. So whenever you press, for example, speed number three, instead of seeing on the screen speed number three, well, you can change this for, for example, like for solar, and on the screen will show solar. Now, every single time you press these speeds, they will stay on until you shut them off manually or until a timer comes to the end of its running time. Then in the center, we have a menu, menu button. This menu button allows us to jump between one of the four menus and we'll talk about that in a, in a second. We have a left arrow, which pretty much is to back up, a right arrow, which is to enter or to continue. And then we have plus and minus, top arrow, bottom arrow, and these are so we can make changes or adjustments. Then the right side, we have the stop resume, resume, resume button. This one allows us to turn the pump off whenever we need to have access to the pump, for example, like to clean the, the basket. And then to resume, we'll use the same button to resume the programming. We'll start it back again. Quick clean button. What does a quick clean button do? The quick clean button will make your pump run at the highest speed for one hour, and then it will go back to its regular programming. So this is good, for example, like if you had a party, maybe, and the water got a little bit cloudy, then you put some chemicals, well, you press the button so the water will move quickly or faster, and then your chemicals can react better to the, to the uh, cloudy pool. 
And again, remember, if you can program one of these controllers, you can program every single one of our pumps. Okay, let's start again, back again with the uh, speeds buttons. We have four of them. From the factory, they come set to 1,000 revolutions per minute, 1750, 2500, or 3250, and you can see what percentage of its capacity it is on the right side. Remember, the maximum speed is 3450, or 3400, 3450 revolutions per minute. Well, again, these buttons, you can go into our menus and change or adjust the speed and also change the name. When we go into one of our other menus, which is the menus for the programming for the timers, we can do up to eight timers. Okay, and this example that we have here, you can see that I have my pump, my timer number one, running from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. every single day at 1,000 revolutions per minute. But I also have another program, program that starts at 12 and shuts off at 4 for solar at a higher speed so my water can go up to my roof and go through the solar panel so we can heat up our pool. But then when the, start, when the sun starts going down, then I decided to shut it off and make another program for, from 4 o'clock to 8 o'clock p.m. to continue a filtration mode, but in this case to a little bit lower RPMs. So like I said, you can do up to eight programs. Just want to keep in mind, if you do a program inside of a program, uh, remember that the number one will override every single one of the programs if they collapse or if, if the programs are be in between hours. And then the number two will have priority and then number three and then number four and so on. Programming. Okay, there's four different uh, menus on this controller. By pressing pro uh, menu once, we will come into a configuration menu which is actually locked. That's because we don't want customers to have access to that. But the way to unlock it is by pressing the right and left arrow for five seconds. And then that will let you get in. When you get into that menu, that's where you can change language, uh, date and time, priming time. You can do a factory reset. You can also change the maximum speed and minimum speed allowed. In other words, the lowest our pumps run, it's 650 revolutions per minute. So if for some reason I don't want the customer to go to that part because the water is just not moving quick enough for my big pool, well then I can change that to a minimum of 1000, for example. So you will never be able to go lower than that. Same thing with the high speed. If for some reason you don't want the customer to go to its maximum, they can, you, then you can adjust the, the maximum instead of being 3450, you can make it 3000. So it never goes above that. That will be for our first menu. Our second menu, timers. That's where you can program up to eight different timers. So you don't need any time clocks, external time clocks, because everything's programmed from the pump. Third menu is to so you can adjust those quick access buttons on the left side. Okay, again, you can change the speed on these and you can change the name. And last, we have a diagnostics menu. That diagnostics menu is pretty much where you can enter. You're gonna see a couple things like serial number of the drive, but nothing, nothing important. The only important thing is to see the event log. The event log will allow you to, will tell you what issues the pump has had in the past. For example, if you have a problem with the pump, you can go there and maybe you'll see that the pump overheated. And then before that, it overheated. And then before that, it overheated. And then you're like, okay, so I gotta see why it's overheating. So you, then you start checking your plumbing, a uh, filter uh, that is dirty, or some valve restricting the flow, causing, to, the, causing the pump to overheat. Or maybe you can see, for example, instead of overheating, you will see that we have a problem with high voltage or low voltage. So that's where you can find the problems and then adjust um, your issue around the equipment pad. So we have come to the end of this presentation. Any questions, please write them down.
just to resume, we want to tell you that we have several variable speed pumps. Depending on the application, it will depend on what pump we recommend. Again, if you have inch and a half plumbing, we will recommend either one of these smaller pumps on the bottom right, max flow 500 or a super pump 700. If you have two inch plumbing, we will recommend either one of these two also, but if you need more flow, you can, you can go up to TriStar 900, which has a total horsepower of 1.85. And if you have bigger plumbing like two and a half or three inch and you need more flow, then you can go with the TriStar 950, which also it's also available with the SVRS option. And, and when, once again, all of our pumps use the same controller. We have one model on variable speed available for commercial size, which is also 2.7 horsepower, it uses the same controller. So that's no no difference. Stay tuned because we will have uh, soon uh, in the next several weeks we will have uh, variable seminars including a commercial one where we'll talk about this pump. Just to let you know this week besides uh, variable speed pump we will have also uh, heating gas heaters a presentation on that and another one on filtration. So please check your emails. You have any questions for me? I don't see anything written down so far. If you have a question, please write it down. If not, then um, I just want to let you know we have here are our emails. We have Roberto Sablon, which is the regional sales manager for the Caribbean and Latin America, and myself, myself Manny Exlawak, as a technical manager for the Caribbean and Latin America. If you ever have any questions, you need any information, technical data, troubleshooting guides, anything that you need, you can always shoot us an email and we'll be happy to assist you with that. So I don't see any questions. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Again, stay tuned. You will receive emails with more information, more uh, schedules on webinars. And, um, and once again, thanks for your time. Be safe and have a great day.